működik. Tisztelt hallgatóság, akkor a második panelünket megkezdjük. Ezt, úgy is, ezt mi úgy hívtuk, hogy az eszmélet panel. Ezt a folyóirat szervezte, mi hívtuk meg a három előadót, de mielőtt bemutatnám az előadókat, jelzem, hogy a Friedrich Ébestifruk szétosztotta a mi értékelő lapot, amit én nem láttam, de önöknek vagy nektek látnotok kell, és kérik, hogy ezt töltsétek ki. Mielőtt bemutatnám az előadókat, néhány szót én is szólnék bevezetőként. Az eszvélet folyóiratról annyit talán kell tudni, a meghívott előadóink is ezt tudják, hogy Magyarországon gyakorlatilag 30 éve egyetlen marxista társadalomtudományi folyóirat van. Ez az eszmélet. Vannak még kisebb orgánumok, de tudományos folyóiratot gyakorlatilag ez az egy létezik. Ezt azért kell hangsúlyozni, mert nem csak Magyarországon megfigyeltem, általában az egész világon, durván leegyszerűsítve, van két nagy irányzata, mondjuk így határozzuk meg bárhogyan, nevezzük bárhogyan, de a aloldalon van két durván fogalmazva nagy irányzat. Az egyik irányzat az gyakorlatilag a marxizmust a történelmi múlt részekét kezeli. Úgy kezeli mondjuk mi Arisztotelész. Úgy része az össztudományos folyamatnak, ezer felé hullott széje, különösebb aktualitása nincs csak a tudományos elemzés területén. De most az eszvélet folyóira az létezése első pillanatától, tehát nyugodtan mondhatjuk, hogy a kelet-európai rendszerváltástól kezdve egy olyan gondolat jegyében munkálkodik, hogy az államszocializmus bukása után a marxizmus aktuálisabb, mint valaha volt. Ez volt a kiinduló pontunk. Emlékeztetnék rá, hogy a mi gondolkodásunkban a régi államszocialista rendszer és az új kapitalizmus között a magyar marxista hagyománynak megfelelően egy harmadik utat kerestünk. A harmadik út az nem valamilyen narodnyi értelemben szerepel itt, hanem abban az értelemben, ahogy Lukács és Lipsic köre valamikor Moszkvában kidolgozta a tercium dátum fogalmát a harmadik lehetőséget, hogy két rossz irányzat, vagy két elmúlt irányzat között egy harmadik irányzatot kell keresni, amely a helyes válasz meg tudja adni egy adott történelmi pillanatban a szocialista mozgalmak számára. Na most az az igazság, hogy mi a marxizmust egy egységes gondolatkörnek tekintjük, amely mind tudomány, mind elmélet, mind egy gyakorlati mozgalom együttesen szerepe, és ez nem függ közvetlenül attól, hogy milyen esélyei vannak egy történelmi áttörésnek a kapitalizmusok kívül. Ha azt gondoltam, hogy a Tercium Datur, amely a 30-as évek narcizmusából eredő volt kör, ezt meg tudom erősíteni, hogy későbbiek folyamán No, Angliában egy másik magyar gondolkodó, Mészáros István, aki bizonyos értelemben az eszmélet közvetlen előfutára, aki nem halt meg, és tulajdonképp azt is mondhatnám, hogy ez a rendezvény az ő emlékének is szentenődik, egy nagyon komoly levelezést adott az utókorra, amit Szigeti Péter barátommal és kollégámmal publikálni is fogunk, egy jelentős részét ennek a levelezésnek, amiből kiderül, hogy a marxizmus rendkívül gazdag magyar tapasztalatokkal rendelkezik. Tehát senkit ne tévesszen meg az, hogy a, két, hogy a régi rendszerben gondolkodó marxisták jó része átállt az új hatalom oldalára, 
1908-1909 után, mert mind az az örökség, amit a korábbi időkben felhalmoztat, a számunkra nagyon fontos. Ez egy igen gazdag kiinduló pont, tehát nem nagyon egyszerű szénzúzni bennünket, mert hatalmas kultúra áll mögöttünk. Az eszmélet folyóinak épp ezt a kultúrát őrzi, ápolja, és meg kell mondjam, hogy azok a szerzők, akiket itt látnak, és akik itt fel fognak lépni, ezek részben szerzők, a két idősebb kollega a szerző, a, a Anitát nem biztos, hogy mindenki ismeri, ő potenciális szerzők, és remélhetőleg még a szerkesztőségnek is aktív munkatársa lesz. Úgyhogy ez, egy, ez csak jelzem, hogy itt egy élő hagyományról van szó. Ezt a marxizmus az is jellemzi egyébként, hogy mi marxból mindenek előtt Mészáros István közvetítésével is úgy fogjuk föl, mint egy nagy egészet. Tehát a mai korban nem az a lényeges a számunkra, hogy miképpen lehet szétszúzni és dekonstruálni a marxi hagyomány, hanem az a fontos, hogy hogy tudjuk életben tartani. Tehát Elveszünk a részletekben, engedjük, hogy a partikularitás uralkodjon az egész fölött, vagy eleve abból indulunk ki, hogy magát a rendszert kell megismerni, a rendszert kell támadni, és a tőkén túl világa irányába kell tájékozódni. Számunkra minden valóban ott kezdődik, amely vállalja ezt a tőkén túli útkeresést, és soha nem hittük abba, hogy a kapitalizmus megjavítható. Nem gondoljuk azt, hogy van jó kapitalizmus. A kapitalizmus egy egységes világrendszer, és rendkívül fontos emiatt itt Vider György kollégámra is utalhatok Szigeti Péterre megint, a marxizmus marka a társadalmi forma elmélet. Ezt mi védjük, ápoljuk, fejlesztjük, a legutolsó számunkban is a tőke és egyáltalán Marxnak a kapitalizmusra vonatkozó nézeteit Marcello Busto egy igen kitűnő tanulmányban foglalta össze, és csak a figyelmüket tudom ajánlani ezt a számot emiatt is, ami éppen a mai alkalommal jelent meg itt a, az Éva hozta éppen ezt a folyóiratot, amit tegnap adta el a nyomdát, itt el lehet érni. Na most eljutottunk oda, itt már nem hogy a szerzőket emlegettem, hogy a mai vitában is nyilván ki fog derülni, hogy ez az antikapitalista útkeresés, amiről beszélünk, ez egy nagyon komoly elméleti hagyományra támaszkodik. Az első előadókat Rászkó Mocsinik, nagyon régi barátunk, még a rendszerváltás korszakából itt van a jobb oldal a kollégám, nagy jelentős filozófiai munkássággal rendelkezik, Szlovéniából jött ide, a jugoszláv tapasztalatoknak szenteli az előadását. Nyilván érdekes vita lesz, és hát utal arra, hogy a mi szocializmus felfogásunkban is a társadalmi önkormányzás, mint a szocializmusnak egy elméleti feltételezése, az egy rendkívül fontos dolog, mert mi majd látni fogjátok, ha az önigazgatás a piac és az állam szorítása közé kerül, akkor abból az önigazgatás jó nem tud kijönni. Ez az államszocializmus tapasztalata, hogy ebből mi következik napjaikra, az majd az előadásban és azt követő vitából kiderül. A, a gender problémáról Anita beszél másodjára, és Musztó barátunk pedig arról a fontos kérdésű nyilatkozik, ami az legutolsó eszméletben is egy fontos tematika, hogy a, a Marxnak az mennyibe volt Marx Európa-centrikus gondolkodó, illetve mennyibe nyitott a világra, és itt a mi álláspontunk természetesen az, hogy Marx volt gyakorlatilag az első gondolkodó, aki a világot feltételezte úgy, mint valami egységes dolgot, amelyet a modern társadalom fog, vagy próbál a saját képmására formálni. Na most ezek alapján, hogy ez követően engedjétek meg, hogy akkor átadjam első előadónak a szót, Rászkó Mojsdi barátomnak, aki hát, 20 percet kap arra, hogy elmondja az 
előadását, és mikor mindenki elmondta, akkor utána egy perces kétések, hozzászólás, és utána az előadók reflektálnak rá. Ha nincs különösebb ellenvetésünk, akkor itt most megkezdenék a mai támet, és átadom a szót Rászkóra. Thank you, Tamás. Uh, I have to thank the organizers and Esmelet in particular for having invited me to this very interesting conference. Um, I will speak about Marx in Yugoslavia, but uh, I narrowed down this uh, huge uh, topic to two episodes. Uh, to two episodes uh, of Marx's activity uh, in uh, socialist Yugoslavia. Uh, so uh, I practice the same attitude towards uh, Marx's work and its uh, operativeness, historical operativity, uh, as uh, Thomas has proposed it in his, uh, uh, in his introduction. Uh, Marx is present Marx's work is present through interpretations by specific historical readings that have their own consistency, which is determined by specific historical and theoretical conjunctures. So the two moments of Marx and Marxism in Yugoslavia I will speak about are uh, divided by the year 1968, of which we are now uh, celebrating the 50th anniversary. Uh, one is the period from late 50s to uh, and early 60s to 68. They are dominated by young Marx uh, texts, by Parisian manuscripts and German ideology, basically. And the, uh, uh, that is young Marx, and uh, the central uh, organ of this uh, uh, movement of thought and politics was the journal Praxis. The second period is uh, from 68 on. Oh, okay, that's sorry. Yeah, the second, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the second uh, period is from 68 uh, on. Uh, and it is dominated by French Marxist Louis Althusser, whose uh, 100th anniversary of birth was yesterday, and uh, by uh, Mao Zedong, uh, introduced through Althusser's texts. Uh, so this is the scheme of my, of my presentation. Uh, the praxis thought uh, lasted on, but it was not so important, uh, and it was losing its political efficiency. Uh, theoretical situation in Yugoslavia in the 60s and 70s was praxis Marxism, which means young Marx, alienation in the focus, uh, humanist Marxism, a generic human being, and radical humanism of the young Marx. Uh, there was a very important academic tradition, uh, well, uh, incipient tradition of Heideggerianism, which means, which meant at that time, uh, nihilism of uh, activism, nihilism of uh, technique, anti-activism, anti which uh, really got on our nerves, um, anti-humanism and Western metaphysics uh, domain. The background, which is very important that we were not uh, aware of it at the time, was school Marxism, which meant a solid education in, 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 in Marx, young and mature, in the Marxist canon, and in political economy, uh, from mercantilism to Keynes. Uh, so um, I will treat with Praxis Marxism on one example case, and that is uh, Milan Kangergas. Uh, article uh, of 71, Phenomenology of the Ideological Political Advance of the Middle Class. We are speaking of middle classes, uh, our speakers before, Alexandru, for instance, was speaking before us. So in this, uh, in this article, which I am going to criticize to show 
why it was necessary to change the paradigm of reading Marx uh, after 68, uh, because 68 was inspired by Praxis Marxism. 68 had the idiom of Praxis Marxism, and in our eyes, 68 failed. So we were forced to look otherwise um, uh, in other directions, and we found uh, to sell and Mao Zedong through him. So, uh, in this article, Kangerga uh, describes the ideological profile of the middle class more or less on, in Lukács' Lukács, Lukács terms. Uh, it's a class contradictory by nature, its position, its historical position is untrue, it proceeds by borrowed ideologies, and uh, it inf now the new, the new element is it infiltrates socialism. Uh, according to Kangana, political bureaucracy represents middle class in the political sphere. The middle class is a bourgeois class in, and therefore anti-socialist. If middle class becomes the dominant class, it will accomplish its bourgeois revolution, which is counter-revolution against socialism. These are the thesis of Kangana. Uh, now, uh, uh, st I start with the critique. Uh, uh, Kandrka, the main problem with this article, especially if you read it today, is that uh, the author does not articulate the middle class ideology to any position within the relations of production, nor neither to any more general social position. The only theoretical uh, 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 paragraph in this sense uh, is an, uh, uh, a quote from German ideology uh, and not a particularly happy one. Uh, the separate, uh, separate individuals form a, form a class only insofar as they have to carry on a common battle against another class. So, uh, um, if you look at the text, you will see that uh, it more or less insists on individualistic approach and that he basically uh, co conceive, conceives social relations as intersubjective relations. Uh, he actually skips the properly social, uh, social part, uh, social dimension. And he proceeds, the middle class has already started its, its battle, this battle against another class by constituting itself against the, uh, the working class. So that may be phenomenologically true, but it poses many, many problems. Especially precisely because he conceives social relations as intersubjective relations, and, um, uh, is, uh, and the whole article is based on the theory of alienation, or philosophy of alienation, in uh, those, uh, let's say, uh, post hegelian terms. Uh, it's Marx's position uh, uh, of the economic and philosophic manuscripts of 44. So, uh, uh, now this has an incredibly important political consequence. If social relations are intersubjective relations, and if the subject alienates herself or himself in the social intersubjective relations of class society, then the subject will overcome her of his alienation by transforming her of his, what? Intersubjective uh, relations, not social relations. So the subject, subject will be able to, to transform her or his uh, intersubjective relations when she or he becomes aware of it. So you have a, a genuine enlightenment element in this position. And uh, the task of philosophy as defined at the beginning of the article is to clarify the state of alienation of the subjects. And this is the quotation. Uh, this essay attempts to clarify some fundamental ph phenomena, etc., etc. This is precisely the same term Marx is using in his letter to Ruger, describing the project of uh, uh, French, uh, <coughs> German French, uh, um, what the, sorry, uh, uh, Yarbo. Yarbo, exactly, yeah. And, Anyway, for that, yeah, uh, 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 so uh, he says, uh, 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 he uses the term Selbstverständlichkeit, Selbstverständigung, 
in and in erklären, which means self-qualification and to declare uh, the social relations for what they are. So it's uh, the, the vocabulary is taken from there. Clarification, explanation, self-understanding, self-comprehension. So, uh, <clears throat> so and the article goes on. We have to discuss this uh, this uh, problem, and discussion is already a step towards desalination. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, a debate on exclusively ideological level and without articulation to the real material social structure only reproduces the existing social structure, regardless to whether verbally it is apologetic or critical. Bypassing the articulation to material social structure, uh, the author constructs uh, an amalgamation of the middle class. And that's my second point. Namely, if we look at at what, uh, at what middle classes were in Yugoslavia precisely at this moment, 71, we get this, this picture. Uh, <clears throat> middle classes, including technicians, are not so numerous, but towards the top of the pyramid. Many work, uh, note that uh, simple commodity uh, production of peasants and uh, and artisans is uh, actually the a part of the proletariat uh, in, this, uh, in this scheme. So, uh, on the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, it's very hard to, uh, the, uh, this sociological uh, construction, which I take from Darko Suvin, uh, is, um, uh, is uh, based on non distinctive features for the middle class, because <coughs> only uh, only uh, the, the groups uh, in italics, that means technicians in industry, transport, construction services, lower and middle management, uh, roughly correspond to the amphibious position of the middle class. All the others are actually uh, in workers, the new worker, uh, labor class, the new uh, worker, uh, working class, in social services which were organized on a socialist principle about which Paul Stubbs were, were, was talking uh, this morning, namely in, se in social, socially managed activities, which were uh, uh, a variant of self-management uh, that combined territorial self-management with uh, self-management in working co collectives. So what the author does not see, but he should attack is why the workers engaged in socialist practices have a middle class that is bourgeois ideology, which I call Lukacian contradiction. Uh, in, uh, in the Schichter of Class in the Wurzheim by uh, George Lukacs, you have this, uh, that, uh, this incredible quote, a class, uh, a class consciousness implies a class conditioned unconsciousness of one's own social historical and economic position, the condition. So, um, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, and this, of course, uh, uh, rhymes very well with Marx and his Holy Family, where they say, it's not a question of what individual proletarians think. It's not a question of what even the class thinks that they should do. It's, the question is what they, they will be forced to do because they are historically proletariat. So the author bypasses this, uh, this uh, line of discussion, uh, the Lukacian paradox and the solution, which uh, actually already was pre present in Lukacs, uh, ironically, Kamberga around, uh, around the introduction to, to uh, Serbo Croatian uh, uh, translation of Geschichte and Klasse So, uh, 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 and this cripples the whole, <coughs> the whole uh, political dimension of Praxis philosophy. Praxis philosophy was an elitist academic uh, uh, very solid, but still very narrowly, uh, narrowly limited uh, in academia and research institutions. And, uh, <coughs> but of course, this was a real problem at the time of the Communist Party of uh, of the League of Communists of Yugoslavia. Uh, this is uh, the, the, the diagram of the membership. And you see how the workers go, are going down, how the 
the workers are going down, the peasants disappeared already in the early uh, 50s, uh, 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 pensioners and students slightly increase, but who increases the most? It's the uh, Angestellten, it's uh, <laughs> the, the clerical employees. So it, it was a real, uh, the author Kangaga uh, detected a real problem, but uh, couldn't uh, go out because, uh, sorry, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, uh, I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> so, uh, the tactic, uh, he detected uh, a real uh, problem, uh, but uh, didn't see the solution because he was close into this early Marx uh, idiom. Uh, so, 68, a new paradigm, Mao appears on the scene. Uh, why 68? 68 is important for very many reasons. Uh, one is economic reform, market socialism uh, uh, in Yugoslavia. Uh, the other uh, is um, abolition of investment funds plus crediting, crediting activity is uh, transferred to the banks who uh, uh, give credits uh, on the profitability basis, on the rentability basis. The position of Alexander Rankovic, the, the presumed uh, uh, hardliner uh, of the Communist Party. Uh, increase of social inequalities, north-south divide, uh, labor unrest, strikes, uh, and, uh, and uh, of course, uh, I, I did mention, uh, a Warsaw, Warsaw Pact intervention into, uh, into Czechoslovakia against uh, reformist uh, 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 Slovakian and Czech. Uh, 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 communists. Uh, so, uh, 66, 65 introduced capitalist processes into uh, Yugoslavia and they showed immediately their effects. I only give, uh, so this, I will skip, 66, 60, 4 is the market self-managed socialism episode. Uh, I only give some indications of, uh, of uh, of this uh, misachievement of market socialism. Look at the, um, uh, sorry, 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 oh, the, the uh, social product. Social product is, uh, it was the socialist counterpart of uh, uh, BDP, uh, brutal domestic uh, product. Uh, it's about 95% of BDP, uh, what nowadays is BDP. So the, the increase of between 60, uh, 54 and 65 was 9.6 uh, on average, which, uh, which is great. And it started to fall, to decrease. And look at those figures. Uh, increase of import in the, uh, in the hybrid system of uh, uh, administrative planning and self-management in working collectives, uh, you have uh, increase of import 8.7 and uh, and in, uh, in the market, market socialism, it's 14. It's it, it, it more than doubles. It do, almost doubles. Increase of export was, uh, was 12, and it decreases for more than half. So you have this, uh, this real problem of uh, inefficiency of capitalist, uh, cap capitalist processes introduced into socialism. Uh, this is interesting because it shows you how banks very fast take over the investment uh, investment activity. Uh, you know, it's a zero, uh, 1.0 in 60, in 69 it's already uh, almost uh, half. And this is the tragic line of Yugoslav socialism, increasing social product by periods, you see how it goes down. Uh, so, 68 was incipient cultural revolution. Maybe we thought it was, but uh, it didn't get, uh, get far. This is China, this is France. Uh, uh, it says, ouvrier, étudiant, élu, nouvelle grand. It never happened. Uh, this is Belgrade. Police is uh, beating uh, manifesta manifestants. Uh, even though when they are already on the ground, that's why I chose those photos. This is the occupied faculty of philosophy, and this is a sitting on the uh, uh, square of students uh, in Belgrade. Uh, so that's the heroic part of it. 
uh, it was uh, uh, it was a revolt against political bureaucracy, against market socialism, the effects of market socialism, against bourgeois ideological apparatuses that uh, very often uh, not taking into account the national cultural apparatuses uh, against university, family, and um, institutions of bourgeois culture. Uh, so. Um, uh, Praxis uh, Marxists were defining the idiom of this revolt. Uh, it was a theoreticist and moralistic, so it could not uh, reach to the masses. Uh, it had, uh, it, had, it failed uh, in short term, but it had considerable long term effects that went up to the 80s. Uh, uh, it was perceived as a failure by its participants, and new theoretical approaches were, were uh, looked for. Uh, so. Um, 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 the, the, the eruption of new th theories was, theories was uh, the so-called structuralism made basically in French, uh, in French reduction with uh, Barth, but also Soviet uh, formalism, Soviet Marxism, uh, etc. Uh, uh, Freud, of course, and Althusser. And through Althusser, uh, Ma uh, Mao came in with uh, four uh, philosophical essays and uh, on the just uh, resolution of uh, contradictions um, uh, in the people. Yeah. So uh, this uh, opened the rigidity of structuralist approach and to a certain extent also uh, the rigidity of uh, a Jusanian approach. Uh, and I gave here a case of theoretical reasons which I don't have to, I, can, I don't have the time to explain uh, in, uh, in detail, since Tamash has introduced terror, terror. Uh, but basically it was the idea that, <laughs> sorry, sorry, uh, it's okay, sorry, sorry, the, 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 uh, we used the, this principle contradiction, principle aspect of contradiction and antagonism ideas taken from, from, from uh, Mao, and uh, the, the final result was this, principle contradiction is between uh, between uh, reproduction of political and cultural bureaucracies as against reproduction of socialist relations. The secondary contradictions are bourgeois ideological practices, which means natural, natural, uh, natural cultures, and non-bourgeois ideological uh, practices, which means avant-gardist of thousand, uh, uh, th thousand uh, types, and uh, capitalist processes in society as against socialist processes in society. But we thought that principal aspects were the socialist one, so socialism was not in danger. That was an illusion, because what happened, well, this was the great time of the 80s, the self-illusion on the, in the alternative cultures. These are different institutions of, of, of alternative culture, a radio, a student radio, um, a commune, a cultural commune, a theater, a this, an avant-gardist, an alternative disco, these are some of the events. Uh, now, this was all uh, self-deception. Uh, uh, this uh, alternative movement did not develop sufficiently strong apparatuses. Uh, and what happened all of a sudden, without uh, us being aware of it, is that the principal contradiction became with the one between capitalist processes in society and socialist process society, and the principal aspects was was uh, were, were the capitalist aspects. So that's what happened during the 80s. We were lured into the into the great uh, the great success of alternative culture and uh, theory, and uh, what happened was that what this comedy, film comedy, predicted in uh, 89, uh, how uh, the downfall of rock and roll. So Mao uh, left the historical scene together with the rock and roll and socialism Yugoslavia. Thank you.